Hello, everyone. Hi. I think we are ready to start. So, uh, welcome. And I'm just going to ask uh, the creative team behind the show a few questions. So, we have here Matthias Trikwe Haraldsson. The <laughs> He's the writer of the play, and you might also know him from Eurovision. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have the actor, uh, Martin Donahue. Donahue? <laughs> and the director, Jack Nurse. <laughs> so the first question is to the writer, Matthias. So, Tell us about why you wrote the play and what it means to you to have it produced here in the UK. Um, it's an adventure to have it uh, produced here in the UK. It, it's a first for me. I've never had a translation produced before, so that's a new. Uh, and of course, um, coming to the UK, getting to know UK theatre is, of course, a learning experience. Um, the question as to why I wrote the play is more difficult to answer. <laughs> it draws on personal things. Um, there's a lot of my dad and my grandmother and myself in there, but also just um, the topics we are so um, caught up in um, as a whole. Mm -hmm. I remember, you know, feeling like this at Ikea, actually. It's, uh, <laughs> um, that it's a place where you go when there's a milestone, somehow. Whether it's you're moving out or to a new place or uh, splitting up or meeting someone mm -hmm. or whatever. These milestones, kind of, you get a pay rise or whatever. Um, it, it all calls for Ikea in my <laughs> in my so there's there's all these people I feel when I'm at Ikea living their own milestones and you, they'll be arguing or having these deep discussions that go to the root of their identity but it's about a cooker you know <laughs> um, and I just had one of those experiences where I uh, started to cry uncontrollably in Ikea with my family. And, uh, <laughs> maybe yes. that, that, um, that's why. So yes, following the lines you... Um, yeah, the, you key, the path that's set out for you, um, what kind of... Wh where do you situate yourself? What's your role in mm -hmm. the catalogue? Yeah. yeah. Something comforting about Ikea then, yes, or maybe not. Yeah, it's familiar. I think it's a familiar place, probably universally by now. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, I think we all have a relationship with Ikea. Yeah, I, I think, think we so. do. And I think the, I was, I was excited to hear the reaction in the audience to the escalator thought, you know, <laughs> <laughs> whether the UK audience could picture the, because there's only one Ikea in, in Iceland and the escalator just goes straight up and uh, everyone knows it when you say it. It's like, yeah, of course it doesn't work. You wouldn't meet people <laughs> going down. <laughs> so it seems to be <laughs> relatable, I hope. Yes. Uh -huh. So, <laughs> so next question is uh, to the team, yeah? What has been your process of working with Nordic Plays? Uh, or with this Nordic Play, you've only been working with that one, yeah? Has it been different to working with uh, a play from the UK? Um, I love it. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> that's you. Um, it's in some ways yes, and in some ways no. I think like every play you start on, um, at, at first you're looking to kind of identify the core themes and ideas that the writer is trying to um, convey. Mm -hmm. um, so um, that was the same with this one you know, mortality, um, the environment, whatever. Um, and then um, what was great about this festival is that each of the directors that are part of it um, had the opportunity to travel to 
the country where their writer was from, um, which was amazing because usually you'd be working on something if you didn't know the writer uh, and like researching or whatever, but actually got to go to uh -huh. Reykjavik. I went to the IKEA in Reykjavik <laughs> with Matthias. Um, we had some veggie balls, uh, <laughs> and um, and that was amazing because it was it was we had conversations there about where the play started, um, and you know we were in the IKEA that the play was set in. Um, uh, so yeah, so it, it, a lot of it was the same, but then also like particularly it's about understanding the specific context in which the play was written in Iceland um, at the point in which Matthias wrote it. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, um, I don't know about you. Um, uh, pretty much what you said. I'd say the approach is probably similar, but the things that you learn or take out of the material is probably a bit different, as in, or, or, or in fact universal, so things that apply probably across borders, you know what I mean? It's just, it's especially all the stuff about humanity or what it is to exist or the themes of capitalism, I'm sure there's like transferable in every country in the world. <laughs> like, uh, so through looking at a text that's written somewhere else, I guess you learn more about the universality of everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. Mm -hmm. Very good. So, and what do you think the impact of uh, these kinds of exchanges is? How has it impacted your work? Should we maybe start with Matthias again? Yeah, it's, it's very impactful. And the impact will show itself. It's not yet um, known, but obviously um, I got to meet Jack and Camilla and there's connections being uh, formed that we, we don't know what that will bring in the future. And, um, you know, uh, new plays being staged in a, new, in a new setting, I think always impacts mm -hmm. a room full of people. So, or I hope so. Yeah. For me, it's very impactful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, similar in terms of the connections that we've made through the, the process, I think there's what's happened tonight, but equally like Matthias saw some shows at the Royal Court last night when I went to Reykjavik, I saw like theatres at the National, uh, shows at the National Theatre, at the City Theatre there. So actually like there's a whole kind of osmosis that you kind of, um, that kind of happens when you're working with a writer from another country. And this only instance that I've done that in terms of watching shows from a different culture and understanding the theatricality that goes into play, comes into play, the ideas that are circulating there. Um, and hopefully that will continue as well. Um, so I think it's like, we've made this show weekly, like Matty says, it's about kind of the meeting of new collaborators and also kind of like, just like broadening your awareness about other stuff that goes on in other countries, I think, culturally mm -hmm. um, and thema thematically as well. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I just agree with both of what you've both said. Uh, I think it's how boring if we were to just sit in our own wee bubble and no know what was happening elsewhere. Like it's, I think it's really important that we are open to all sorts of things that are going on everywhere. Um, yeah, especially probably in the current political climate where you're, where you're inclined to look inward. It's probably good to be making connections out with the UK, I imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought Reykjavik was the center of the universe. It is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Ikea is, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so regarding the translations, did you come up with uh, any, uh, were there any problems that came up translating something Icelandic to English? <coughs> well, Philip Rufton is an Iceland-based uh, translator who's done a lot of great work um, translating into English, um, translating Icelandic literature into English. And I'm very, um, very happy to be working with him. Obviously, there were things that also could be ascribed more to an adaptation, but I, like I was curious to find out what you would do with Gardabær or the pond or mm -hmm. whatever. You chose to just go with the Gardabær yeah, as a suburb yeah. in Reykjavik, if you, you know. Yeah, we did discuss it, didn't we? Like there was a moment when it was set in Glasgow. There was a moment when it was set in the Croydon IKEA that we. Uh, oh, because yeah, that's oh. where we <laughs> had our veggie yeah, balls. That was uh -huh. where we had our veggie balls. Let's not forget. Um, <laughs> But um, I don't know, I think there was something in particular about Lawrence's, I think the thing, the thing that we came, uh, d that we discussed was just as a particular specificity about Lawrence's um, 
worldview that feels like inherently Icelandic, I think, um, and, and also universal, but it just felt like that um, we might, yeah, lose something. We, w- we were going to uh, lose more moving it from Reykjavik than, than gain anything from moving it to the UK. Um, mm-hmm. Whilst, of course, there's a version where it was like, you know, 200 pounds for a grilled or a cook-up ah, or whatever. Yeah. Um, and particularly because of this festival as well, it's, you know, celebrating um, Nordic culture. So it just felt like let's root it where the play was originally set, even though we're doing it in Martin's beautiful Scottish accent. Um, yeah. Yeah. But the names came from the translator. Uh-huh. Lawrence or... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the names were not kept Icelandic. <laughs> no, no, no. That was the translators. Mm-hmm. How would you say the Icelandic names? Laurus was the... Laurus. 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 Mm-hmm. Ang- Anglicization. Yeah. I thought it was really easy to... It was, a, I f- I f- in my opinion, it was a really good translation. It felt like uh, trips off the tongue quite easy. Like, I thought it was... There, was, there, was n- there wasn't any bits that were really problematic or, like, sort of going, what's going on there? It was all clear and I thought it was... It reads really well, mm-hmm. the translation. Mm-hmm. Great. So we do have time if uh, anybody in the audience would like to ask a question. We do have time for a question, yes? Go ahead. Hi. Um, I'm really interested in translation, so I'm, this is actually kind of a good little segue, and this is primarily in Matthew, um, because it's about the translation. I'm interested because, of course, you've already put it on back home in Iceland. Mm-hmm. Um, was there anything about this, not just the translation, but this production, this performance, that, um, that revealed something that perhaps you didn't see in the original? Um, was there anything surprising? Yeah, I mean, moving things into another context always reveals them, in a way. Um, I don't know what examples to take, but I guess it's a very, it's a very, it's a play about privilege, in a way, and about, uh, it's, it's a play for a very prosperous people to reflect, you know, it's not a, uh, I don't know, and the guilt that come like the justified guilt uh, there, therein, and I don't know. Iceland is a very um, monotonic place in many ways, and seeing it in London, th- there's there's bound to be way way more ways to see it here, I guess. Um, I don't know how else to describe it, other than you know the answer is yes. There are there are always revealing moments when you see things in a different context. Thank you. Right. I would like to thank you all very much for coming, and uh, we're not going to have it any longer now. We're going to go, and uh, everybody is very welcome to join us upstairs for nipples and some drinks. I think. So thank you very much. Thank you.